Hey, what's up, everyone? This is oh, actually, we don't we don't need this today. Actually, we just put that over there. Let's start over. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Ergo Josh, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, I'm sure you've read the title, but I'm not giving up digital art completely. But I'll say more about that at the end of the video. Right now, I want to show you some new art supplies that I've got. The first thing I got was this new sketchbook. This is the Illo sketchbook. I'm sure you've heard about it. Like every YouTuber has done a video. Every art YouTuber has done a video on this, um, but I really like it. It's nice and big square. I like how it's actually textured. You know, if you can, if you can hear that, I was coming from a moleskin sketchbook that I haven't even come close to finishing, but the pages are so thin and it's like, slick you know like when I draw with a mechanical pencil it feels like I'm drawing with a knife blade but this is nice and when I draw on it, it makes a nice scratching sound just like my iPad this is the first and only sketch I've done not that great but I'm definitely happy with my purchase for this so yeah this is something I plan to definitely force myself to finish no matter what <laughs> next up I have my new Prismacolor color race pencils um, I was inspired to get these by draw with waffles again I loved how they looked when she was using them in her sketchbook they're super smooth and I love that they're colored you know I have a whole video on why I like to draw in pink on my iPad and it's the same reason here it's just so much more freeing to be able to draw without feeling like I'm constricted and I can just make all the mistakes I want and learn as much as I want. Now, of course, when you have real colored pencils, you also need to make sure that you get yourself a pencil sharpener. So I got this from Amazon. It's called the Jarlink pencil sharpener. It's pretty good. I haven't used one of these in years and it gets them pretty sharp. I can charge it with a USB cable and so I don't have to use a whole outlet for it. And um, I also like it because it's electric, so I don't have time to be sitting here cranking pencils in a handheld pencil sharpener <laughs> when I'm coming from digital art. So this is already a stretch for me. So I had to pick up one of these for my pencils. And next we have even more colored pencils. These I actually didn't buy. These are really old Prismacolor Verithin colored pencils that I got when I was in high school. Um, I just haven't used them. And I wanted to get these because I wanted to add a little bit more color variation to my sketches once I get more comfortable and to be able to darken up areas if the Prismacolor color erase pencils are too light. So I selected a nice little color palette here that I feel like will be easy for me to work with my little red, pink, or go Josh color scheme going on here. So I'm super excited to use those. I've already tested out a little bit of it in my Halo sketchbook. I also got a mechanical pencil. This is the um, Graphigear 1000 by Pentel. Um, this pencil is something that a lot of people use in school just to, you know, write and draw alike. Um, it's something that I really enjoyed using when I was in school, but when I got it, I realized it just doesn't, it's just so difficult coming from the iPad and then trying out those colored pencils. I don't really enjoy sketching with it so much. So I, I decided to get some red um, leads for it. They're from a company called June Gold. Um, they're very dry, but they actually don't look too bad in the sketchbook actually. And they actually have a nicer color than the orangey vermilion color erase pencils. Um, you you may see me use this a little bit, but um, not as much because it's just not, it's just kind of a pain to use when I draw. I also got this mechanical pencil. This is a Rot Ring 600. Um, I thought, okay, this is gonna be when I get serious and start adding some details, but this is just such a pain to draw with for me. Like, I don't know what it is. It feels like I'm trying to draw with a thumbtack and cutting into the paper, and it's so difficult to to just shade with. And I don't, I don't know how some of my favorite artists use these to get such nice shading, but I don't think I'll be using this for much drawing. Hopefully it doesn't go to waste because it was so expensive. And last but not least, this is not really a traditional art supply, but I got this upper pencil grip and if I can get it off, it's actually on pretty tight. Um, this is what it looks like. And I really like it because it makes the Apple Pencil feel just freeing. I don't have to grip it very hard. That's probably what it is. And it feels like holding one of those pencils and the other nice thing about it is when I'm doing a lot of detailed drawing for a long period of time, it feels completely fine. I love that it has these grooves in there so I don't miss the nice um, flat edge that the Apple Pencil has. And I just hold it lightly and I can, I, at this point, I've practiced with it a little bit and I feel like I have a lot more control. 
I decided that I wanted to do a quick little sketch here um, while I tell you guys about what I've noticed about the differences between sketching and drawing traditionally versus drawing digitally. I found the biggest pro to sketching traditionally is the satisfaction. There's just something really special about filling a sketchbook with your drawings. It, it just feels like you're making a piece slowly, you know? It's, um, it's just as fulfilling as making some super nice, um, painstaking digital art painting. But the sketching that I do in Procreate, it just feels sometimes like it just goes to the wind. I, I can't really show it as easily. People definitely don't care about them as much. If you if you ever notice, if you post stuff on Instagram, people are much more interested in your digital, like finished portraits versus your sketches. But as soon as you upload traditional sketches, people are like, ooh, like really, really interested in it. Um, but yeah, I just, it's solid. It feels real. You know, it's so nice to be able to open up a sketchbook and look through them instead of opening up one by one, scrolling through a gallery of thumbnails, looking at your sketches that way. Another con to digital art is the tools can kind of suck away the experience that you could be getting from your drawings. I'm talking about the undo tool, the lasso tool, and the zoom tool. Um, there's just something about being able to use the undo tool, being able to shift things around, even the liquify tool. It makes you careless, or at least it's made me careless and not put in as much effort into my strokes or into studying that specific angle of the nose or looking at that perspective of the eye because you can just scribble something down, see if it's right, and then if it's not, try and adjust it and fix it later. Um, it doesn't let you develop your visualization skills as much as drawing on paper does. When you draw on paper, you really have to zoom in physically and really squint your eyes and look closely and wait and ghost your line in with your hand above the paper and really try and do your best effort and it makes you develop this technique where you can see what you're going to draw before you really draw it um, and that comes with a lot of practice but it definitely is a skill that can be developed and i feel like i've kind of limited myself from developing that skill by relying on those tools and the zoom tool it's it's funny it you can really easily get too focused on the details when you can zoom in infinitely like that but when you compare it to something like a sketchbook where you can't zoom in except for moving your face closer to the drawing, you maintain a constant awareness of how your drawing looks as a whole. And it tends to just have this really nice energy about it. The strokes that you make, the little mistakes, the little um, hesitations, they all add up into this really cool and energetic and attractive looking sketch that can easily be lost. Um, I got to the point where sometimes I would sketch something in digital art and it would look as if I traced it <laughs> because my lines were just too perfect and I had gotten pretty good at, you know, mastering re super realistic human anatomy by representing it with lines. Sketching just allows you to get so like intimate with your work. I, I felt like I felt in high school again. It's just, it's just you and your artwork. You get so close to it. It's so precious when you're working with these tools because they're really all semi-permanent. You know, you can't just whip out the eraser tool and get a perfectly white thin line erased in your drawing where you need it. You got to really plan that when you're working traditionally. So it's, it's just something that's a lot more of a kind of like a dance when you're sketching. It's just so therapeutic and it, it just feels so much more rich. At the end of the day though, I'm not going to shoot down digital art because of course I'm still going to do it a lot more. But when you do these sketches, when you work traditionally like this, I found that you take those things that you've learned and you bring it to the digital art world and it allows you to try and force yourself to limit um, your use of those tools and to spend that extra time getting really um, focused on your subject and what you're trying to show. For me, my new process 
going forward is to um, limit how much sketching I do on my iPad. Even though I got it to be, you know, this portable thing where I take everywhere with me so that I can sketch easily, I really want to move that to my sketchbook. I want to draw traditionally. My goal is now to sketch all week traditionally and then develop at least, most likely just one, um, very, you know, detailed rendered digital art piece. Um, I feel like this is not only going to allow me to develop my raw skill and speed a lot faster using traditional media, but also allow me to continue to experience what it's like to push myself and to strive for excellence and to really craft something amazing and to really um, learn about, continue to learn about rendering and colors and stuff like that. Those kind of things do need to be practiced very often. Um, and it also, personally, on the kind of... <laughs> On the um, business side of things, I've noticed on Instagram that's just how I perform my best. When I spend more time in between posts and I post something really good, though everything does better. But if I post more often and it's not really that great, things kind of slow down. So that kind of leads me to another point that I'm making. I'm making a second Instagram account. I've actually already made it, but I gave up on it a while back. It's called Ergo Sketch. And there I'm going to be posting a lot of the sketches I do and maybe sharing what I think about those sketches. I don't know. I'm not really going to be too serious on that account, but I definitely do want to use it because it's great to be able to see your process in that gallery format. And it's helpful to anyone who wants to see what I'm doing in real time. And it's also a great way to kind of remind myself if things do end up kind of going really well there. It'll be a good encouragement to, you know, break out the sketchbook at least once a day and make sure I get something done. Right now, I feel like I could sketch forever because I'm super excited with all this stuff, but I'm sure there's going to come a time where I don't feel like drawing at all for like two or three days. And I've really just got to force myself to open that sketchbook and do something. I found it's, it's a really cool effect. I found that whenever I try to draw something, Actually, with this drawing, I only wanted to draw the eyes, but you just find yourself like, oh, I want to draw more stuff. <laughs> I started drawing the rest of the face and it didn't end up really that great, but I think it's pretty good for drawing eyes without thinking of the face at all and then just adding the face as an afterthought. I think this is a pretty good thing, but oh well, it's, it's you know, this is my second serious sketch in a sketchbook after like years and years and years, so I'm giving myself a little bit of slack here and just focusing on volume and spending some real time of course with the sketch not just sketching super fast here and there and then moving on to the next one so that's it for today um what are your thoughts on digital versus traditional uh, do you agree with the stuff i've said so far what has your experience been um, if you work digitally and traditionally. It's something that I've really been meaning to do for months and months now, but I think I'm finally going to get serious about it from this point on because I've wanted, I've gotten to that point where you, your standard gets to a certain point that's higher than your skill. And then after a while, if your skill doesn't improve, you start feeling really bad about your art. So I'm trying to really, really attack it because uh, every sketch I do, I'm just like, ugh. It's just not at this level, but I don't know what exactly I'm missing, but it's not there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but hopefully we can both uh, get to a place where we're happy with our progress <laughs> or at least, you know, having fun and not really seeing ourselves to taking ourselves too seriously with our artwork. But yeah, in the meantime, guys, have fun. Keep drawing. Stay positive, And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.